Romania holds one of the planet's most valuable natural treasures. A vast wilderness of towering mountain peaks and pristine forests that provide a habitat for thousands of species of flora and fauna. As we've seen in previous episodes of Wild Carpathia, this priceless ecosystem is under threat from man, but still remains probably the most unspoilt region in Europe. In this, the final part in our trilogy, we'll be travelling north from Transylvania to explore the historic Maramuresh, a landscape rich in culture, where the old ways are jealously guarded and medieval traditions coexist alongside modern life. We'll experience more of the country's stunning national parks, take a steam ride through the mountains and pay a visit to Bukovina's inspirational painted monasteries which serve as a canvas for some of the finest examples of religious art in the world. On the way, we'll be looking at how culture, adventure and ecotourism could provide an alternative solution to stem the flow of illegal wood that pours out of Romania and offer a more stable and long-term income for its rural populations. If you're going to explore the far north of Romania, it's a good idea to start your journey from Cluj, a buzzing town which owes its renaissance to the spirit of creativity. As we'll see, these remote landscapes have been inspiring music and art for millennia, and Cluj has become the hub for a new wave of painters and artisans whose bohemian studios here in the old paintbrush factory underplay the stir they're causing on the international art scene. Also worth seeing are the extensive botanical gardens dating back to 1872, which house a huge collection of rare species of plant, but more importantly, provide an insight into this region's native flora. The Maramuresh is a region famed for its cultural integrity. Ancient wooden villages and churches, the likes of which you won't find anywhere else, cluster around the rolling foothills of the Carpathians and offer a vital bridge between past and present. Skills and techniques for working with wood are preserved and nurtured and enable the continuation of historic architecture and design unparalleled in other parts of the country. While existence is tough here, with baking hot summers and Siberian winters, the people of the Maramuraj have a decidedly upbeat attitude to life and its cessation. This is the happy cemetery in Sapunsa, less of a graveyard and more of a tribute to the people who lived here. What's so wonderful about this cemetery is that it's not about death, it's a celebration of life, of people's stories. Listen to this. Under this heavy cross, my poor mother-in-law rests. Three more days she would have lived. I would rest and she would read. You who are passing by, not to wake her, please try. Because if she comes back home, she'll criticize me more. But I'll behave so well that she'll not return from there. You who are reading this, don't get into trouble as I did. Find a good mother-in-law and live in harmony with her. Wise words. To truly experience the Maramuresh, you need to immerse yourself in its traditions. Religious festivals play a pivotal role in the annual calendar, with celebrations taking part in different villages throughout the year.
Pentru miros de bună mireasmă, domnicească, ne dimite nouă Dumnezeescul Har și Darul Sfântului Duh să ne rugăm. During the summer months, perhaps the most common reason for communities to come together, as with other parts of the world, is to attend a wedding. Although here, they do things a bit differently, as I found out when I joined renowned folk singer and poet Grigore Leshe. Charlie, am ajuns în satul gata, la munte. Încă Mara Mureș să mai țin munțile astea. Ia! Femeile bătrâni spun la porți, copiii mici în brațe, uite aici oamenii de bine rău sunt îmbrăcați, ce te rași, ce te rași, cântă, mai rău, dar cântă. La mireasă se cântă, femeile așteaptă, părinții ia să cine. Minte n-aș bine mirile după ea în casă, să o iei de la părinți și o duce la el acasă, adică mireasă de-am înainte că rărere ți se oprite. Se pune întrebarea, domnule, are merită, ori merită să mai investim în asta, în cultura tradițională? Eu zic că se merită. Până la urmă, oamenii înțeleg, ia, se adună, au străi, uite, cojoace, iată, clopul, horinca e horinca, de o sută de focuri, să aibă tineri în urmă, să aibă tineri în urmă. Charlie, aceea ta! Ne rog! Ia! Ia! Hai să mergem să vedem Nireasa! Eventually, the groom arrives with his family and the other men of the village to pick out his fiancée from the assembled women folk. And at long last, everyone can make their way down to the church to formalize the arrangement. Music not only comprises a vital part of communal events like these, but it also documents and defines the place it originates from. It can evoke the spirit of the landscape it was born in, reflect the voice of its people, and help safeguard their history and identity for generations to come. Grigore explained more as we visited the village where he grew up. Aici vinem vara, vinem iarna, am făcut săniuțe iarna. Mă jucam până pomne ăștia, până copaci și horem și mă încercam glasul. Mă auză vecinii, până sat și opre pe mamă și zice, tu năstăsie tu, a tău e coptilul. Am eu dat, ei, zice, dar horește. Ei, că dragostile cele mari dai, da. Hai, că stau în drău. Stau în drău, ca doi pândari. Ce mai mare minune pe lumea asta e Horitul. Că Horea te scoate din suferință, îți dă nădejdea și te face fericit. Eu astăzi sunt fericit că sunteți pe grădina strămoșilor ei. Aici, în căcenușa vieții, e aici, cenușa lor e aici. Eu viu cu hoare asta și îi aduc. De astăzi, din sara asta, 
Când soarele se pregătește să se ducă la culcare, sunteți în inima mea. Eu n-aș cânta, doar aș muri. The floral meadows, orchards and lush pastures of the Maramurej provide an ideal environment for apiculture. Here, bee numbers are thriving thanks to an absence of large-scale intensive agriculture and the commensurate use of pesticides and chemical fertilizers. Nomadic beekeepers still remain a common sight on roadsides, their trucks laden with hives and their wares on sale to passing travelers. How did you first get into beekeeping? Părinții mei aveau albine. A fost uh, și este o îndelindicire foarte plăcută și foarte utilă și uh, numai în natură și iubesc natura ca pe cei mai sfânt. I've been stung twice in the last couple of minutes. How do you avoid getting stung <laughs> the whole time? Și eu mușcat. 50, 60 de albini pe zi. Foarte sănătos veninul de albine. Subțiază sângele. Primul cules e acela noi la pomii fructiferi. După aia mergem la cules la rapiță. După aia mergem la cules la salcâm. După aia ne reîntoarcem acasă la polifloră. Și după aia mergem la floarea sorului, pe care le pregătim pentru iernat. Cum e hamul în sală? Da, o să vă arăt acum. Cu fum de sal, le calmăm. Am stort acum de două săptămâni, acum iară să plinesc ramele. Familiile sunt puternice și este cules. Bun, să vedem. Mi-are proaspătă, asta e băgată de azi. Acum o să gustați. Mm. Super. Organic. Organic. Is there a way of protecting the bees, given the fact that fertilizers and pesticides are being used more and more, even here in Romania? Deocamdată în România e foarte greu de a proteja albinele, pentru că parcelele de pământ sunt foarte mici și fiecare face cu pământul lui ceea ce vrea. Ar trebui făcute niște asociații puternice și acționat pentru oprirea folosirii pesticidelor. Să se folosească produse organice la, la tratamentele plantelor. Deci dacă să continuăm așa, ne omoră albinele la noi, la stupă. In response to the march of cement culture, several organizations have sprung up to educate and train new artisans in the necessary skills to help preserve the architectural landscape of the Maramuresh, like this project in the hills south of Bayamare. I've observed that the old traditional Romanesh de lemn disappear in the country, and I've tried să facem un spațiu în care să îmbinăm nou cu vechiul. So in fact, you're building a small community here. Da, practic vrem să transformăm un loc într-un loc de evenimente culturale, să aducem tineretul, să învețe elemente tradiționale românești, tehnici de reparația caselor și tot ce ține de case vechi și case noi. Along with initiatives like these, the Maramureș is waking up to the need for authentic places to stay combining old world ambience with creature comforts. A good example is this eco-lodge nearby a spree, owned by sculptor and potter Daniel Lesh, who has rediscovered ceramic techniques dating back to the early Dachans and uses them to weird and wonderful effect. That evening, I was joined by friend and singer Loredana Groza, whose reinterpretation of Romanian folk roots has inspired a new generation. It's such a pleasure. I, uh, I don't know 
why I'm so lucky to be here with you guys. Oh, it's beautiful, isn't it? I mean, we're right in the yes. heart of the mountains here. It's nothing like reality, you know, like no. seeing and touching and yeah. smelling. Smelling, talking and <laughs> Yeah, oh, look, look, look what they have here. We have the traditional soup, yeah, yeah, here it's a traditional dish. It's cooked uh, very uh, high duke style or Robin Hood style. It's made of uh, meat, of course, and vegetables and a secret ingredient. Okay. It's a uh, sour soup, like a chorba. Since I was a, a child, my mom uh, used to uh, give us uh, at noon and sometimes uh, even uh, at, uh, at dinner, this kind of chorba. It's very good because it's light and also it fills you, yeah. which is uh, good when you have uh, to learn, to work, to travel and uh, to create. And my music is inspired of uh, old Romanian songs and uh, Romanian um, rhythms and um, I'm trying to make them um, understandable to the younger generations. Sometimes when you're a, a teenager, you think uh, everything that your mom or your dad is listening to is a little bit old-fashioned or <laughs> uncool. And uh, what I'm doing is uh, trying to um, connect all these uh, ages because all these lands, they have their own music, their own sound and yeah. every generation put their the imagination and their soul yeah. and creativity. And we are on, uh, living on the shoulders of our ancestors. As you say, you've traveled the world and I've yeah. noticed there's something quite unique about Romanian culture. It's the way that people still embrace uh, and treasure their past traditions and their culture and their heritage here. It's kind of a pride, I can say, but we have to make it even bigger. Because sometimes when you live in paradise, you, you're not aware trees. anymore yeah. of the, the treasure of what you're living. This is a song which I like very, very much. It's from Ardal, from Transylvania. It's called oh, Ana Zorle Sevarsa. Ana Zorile Sevarsa This animal For our final musical destination, the Maramuresh, we deferred to famous local band Iza and Grigore for what soon became a typical Romanian knees up, and one that lasted well into the next day.
Traveling southeast, you approach the wild border between Romania and the Ukraine. Here, in places, the forest has been heavily depleted by illegal logging. But one area now managed sustainably is the Vasa Valley, thanks in part to an expert team of rangers. Admittedly, the job is made easier by an almost total absence of road access, which is why if you want to head up into the mountains, you need to take the train. Starting from the town of Vichyot de Sousse, the Mokonitsa steam engine, which used to transport lumber, provides a spectacular way to experience the wilderness without the need for a compass and walking boots. East of the Maramuresh, you reach Bukovina, or northern Moldavia, which during the Middle Ages formed a religious buffer zone between Islam, courtesy of the Ottoman Empire, and Christianity. This is one reason why Bukovina, or land covered by beech forests, harbors such a profusion of monasteries and churches, many built by Stephen the Great to celebrate his victories on the battlefield and to strengthen religious ties. But it only goes part of the way to explaining why a number of these exhibit intricate murals on the outside as well as the interior walls. The famous painted monasteries of Bukovina are exceptional examples of Byzantine art, and almost all of them have now been classified UNESCO World Heritage Sites. Ostensibly, the purpose of such elaborate frescoes was to make the story of the Bible and the lives of the saints accessible to less literate members of the community. But there are deeper spiritual reasons, as I discovered when I spoke to religious historian Father Gabriel Heria, whose local parish incorporates the church of Patra Uts. Our churches was built like heaven gates, not uh, only for the people who go in every Sunday to the church. This heaven gate was built for all the people from all the people who are here, who are around for all the nature. And it's easy to show this if you paint church outside. But these churches are not simple museums. The greatest treasure of Bukovina are the people who live in proximity. They order their life in harmony with the spiritual through in the architecture and in the paintings of this church. The tourists, the visitors can learn from these people how they can speak with God. And the painters painted the church outside, like in inside, to show the connection between church and all the nature. Preserving and restoring these incredible monuments is a full-time job, with a lot of the murals, both inside and out, having been damaged or destroyed by man or the march of time, as is apparent on churches like this one at Probata. Despite the protective roof that's so characteristic of all these painted churches, you can still see the effect of the elements. 
This is the north facing side of the church and here the frescoes have almost disappeared entirely. Inside, however, Probata has perhaps the best examples of medieval mural painting in Bukovina. These images have been painstakingly reclaimed by experts who labor all year round to recover the original definition and color from walls either plastered over or simply lost behind centuries of smoke and grime. I visited the monastery of Suchovitsa, where work is still underway. It must be a very rewarding job to watch the wall you're working on just get brighter and brighter as you reveal more of the colour. Yes, it's, it's an amazing job and uh, the most rewarding thing is when you remove the scaffold at the end of, uh, of your work here and you see all the surface cleaned and, and finished, so it's, it's really nice. For, for the moment I'm removing the deposits of dust. As a rule, we try to, to use the substance according to the sensitive of uh, the pigments. It's really effective, isn't it? I mean, the way the grey <laughs> comes out here, it looks yeah, like it's, it's just been we, painted again. We are lucky the here. The <laughs> contrast is uh, fantastic, isn't it? Yes, it's true. Today, the Moldavian landscape has been at least partially tamed and some of its larger fauna lost, but one organization is in the process of reintroducing the most emblematic, European bison, in a bid to re-establish the original balance of nature. They know we're here, don't they? Yes, for sure. If you, if you see some cows looking to us very carefully, but uh, uh, it's still no danger for them because uh, their tail moves in, yeah. in a normal way. When they decide to run, the tails uh, go up, yes? The tails go up okay. and uh, it's a sign for all the herd and okay. everyone will, will start to run in the opposite direction. That's the alarm signal? Yes. Like a rabbit when it bangs its foot on Indeed. the ground? Well, let's see how close we get before that yeah, happens. We can try. Or we get charged? No, no. They don't charge sure. you, do they? No, no. No? No, for sure. No, it's free. <laughs> it's for free. It's, it's for once. Free. It's once. One <laughs> shot. The rewilding process, I mean, will these be released into the true wild? For sure, in, in uh, next spring another five will, uh, will get released. into the wild. And you think that, that they will be able to coexist perfectly happily with the modern landscape with man? Yes, especially in the areas where, where people are habituated to, to use the landscape and the uh, natural resources in a sustainable way. It's a success story. What benefits do they bring to an ecosystem like this? They uh, keep the balance between uh, forest areas and the open areas. So they kind of keep the borders of the forest and the pasture yes. as they are in separate. Yes, and uh, because of bison, a lot of other species can, can live. And uh, speaking about bugs, birds, uh, the succession of species can be uh, controlled in a, in a natural way. That can't be very good for the tree. The bison just take a small strip of, of bark and then let the tree and go to another tree. So okay. no problem for the tree. It is incredible. I mean, he's eating that like spaghetti. Yes, they succeed to debark to three or four meter high. Very clever. Very clever. And they simply learn. How do the locals feel about what you're doing here? Uh, there was announced uh, at the beginning of a reintroduction program and it was a period of consultation and uh, all of them agreed. And uh, nowadays they simply like this idea. It's become some kind of concept for the sustainable development of the area. And also it's something that not only contributes to the biodiversity, or should we say reinstates the biodiversity that was here before, but helps with local tourism, 
brings people into the area. Yes, already tourists started to come to see the wild bison, to see the semi-free bison. Also, we have uh, the local uh, handicraftmen started to produce some, uh, some articles related to bison. And of course, it also represents a renaissance for the symbol of Moldavia. Yes, not uh, only just the, the renaissance of a symbol, but what is related to it. So we expect to have uh, good, uh, good behaviors, morals, people. And greater social solidarity, perhaps. We hope. <laughs> The Calaman Mountains south of Bukovina cover an area of about 2,000 square kilometers and form a massive Andesitic barrier between Moldavia and Transylvania, cradling the biggest extinct volcanic crater in Europe. Past eruptions have helped shape an otherworldly vista and make it one of Romania's most breathtaking national parks. Its signature landmark is a series of igneous pillars known as the Twelve Apostles, which preside over the surrounding valleys and afford truly memorable views. The park management is adopting a refreshingly proactive attitude to the growing numbers, taking advantage of this natural adventure playground. Uh, the visitor center is built for uh, uh, children education and for tourists. The park is special because uh, here is the one of the most uh, important uh, wellness uh, in Romania. We have here a large conifer forest, uh, many animals, birds, uh, wolves, lynx. We have here uh, the beautiful reservation like uh, 12 Apostle Geological Reservation. In the park, uh, there's no hunting, no deforestation, uh, so the animals, it's uh, safe and the ecosystem is protected. Ecotourism. Uh, bring the money for the uh, community and uh, it is uh, a good alternative uh, for uh, the traditional uh, forest exploitation. With the influx of visitors, many local people are making the transition from farming and forestry into ecotourism. Happily, there is now an organization helping them to do this with clear advice and a certification process to ensure their efforts contribute to rather than denigrate the natural surroundings. Our organization is promoting and implementing ecotourism in Romania. So we work both at the national and regional level, and we work with businesses as well. So on the national and regional level, we promote and implement the concept of ecotourist destination. It's an opportunity for local communities through ecotourists to develop small-scale businesses based on the nature and the, and the rural culture. So we look for those businesses that have chances to become more responsible and we implement a certification scheme and those certified businesses they have a good chance in order to, f to create local networks and these networks as well are important to maximize the benefits to the local community so when one tourist spend one euro in such a guest house this one euro is not anymore one euro maybe it's value three or four years because it's wisely uh, distributed to the community. Heading south through the Bikas Gorge and over the mountains, we cross into Transylvania once again, where new enterprises are underway to exploit this rising demand for eco-friendly travel. Like a scheme to build over a hundred kilometers of cycle paths, linking together some of the most important Saxon villages. We have a large number of cyclists in Romania and they don't have proper trails. Even in the mountains we have forestry roads but they are not proper marked, they are not proper maintained. So the plan is by the, the end of 2014 to have 100 kilometers of new trails to link all the Saxon villages with Sigishwara. The shortest trail will be like five kilometers, the longest will be between Viscri and Sigishwara. This trail will follow the ridge and it will be quite easy to ride on it in order for tourists to be able to use by themselves the trails without necessarily a guide. The idea is to attract more and responsible tourists here, people interested in nature and culture, people who like to have nice trails, good food, good accommodation, nice people. We want to start uh, this project to be the first one. It is the first one in Romania. 
and we want to give an example. So we'll create a brochure for the trail, a map, but also a best practice guide in order for others to, to be easier to build and to find a way to discuss with the land managers the best way and the best route for these trails. Romania is facing a crossroads. Its two greatest natural treasures, its forest and its medieval landscapes, are in danger of being lost due to uncensored modernization and illegal logging. Huge tracts of land have already been destroyed by the reckless greed of those prepared to sacrifice their legacy for financial gain. The extent of this problem can be clearly seen in and around the Fagarash Mountains. But it's not too late. There are those who are working tirelessly to save this crucial ecosystem. I caught up with one organization hoping to link the Fagarash Natura 2000 site with adjoining national parks and areas of private land to safeguard remaining sections of pristine forest and create what might hopefully become the biggest wilderness reserve in Europe. That is quite a specimen. Elm tree, yeah? Yes, it is a mountain elm. I saw a similar one in the Semenik National Park in the old growth forest and it was about 400 years old. So this one probably has the same age. So this elm was quite fortunate it didn't get cut down. Yeah, it was lucky because now it's part of a protected area and it is part of the property that FCC buys for conservation. So he will live as long as, as, long he as nature can. dictates, basically. As he can, yeah. Tell me, obviously, you're taking areas of land and conserving them. How does it all work? Well, seven years ago, the group of conservationists and philanthropists got together and they came to the conclusion that in order to save those forests here, they have to try to buy the forests. We are trying and we are buying all the forests that are available to be bought in order to save them and to preserve them for perpetuity. And this is, this is one of the important goals of the foundation. So uh, the only way to really ensure that the forest is yes, safe is yes. to own the forest? Yes. We are trying to restore the forest with the original type of forest. And that should be an example to be followed in, in the, at least in the Natura 2000 sites. Do you have difficulty convincing the local people that this is going to be of direct benefit to them? Yes, there are some difficulties because they are afraid that if there are restrictions, they will not get the compensations. Okay. But the number of the visitors will increase a lot in this kind of natural areas. And we are not talking about visitors for ski resorts or hotels. We are talking about the visitors who enjoy the nature and who enjoy wilderness. And we have to admit that in Romania we have only 1.4% from the territory as national parks. So I think there is space for more. How are you going about reassuring people? We have to start to com communicate more with the people. We have to start to bring examples because all over the world where is a national park there were a lot of benefits. And the value of the wood from a forest, it's represented maybe only 30%. Because monocultures and managed forests you can find wherever. So this area on long term is very precious. And we have to try to preserve it like it is now. We learn at school that through forestry we are saving the forest. And after years I realized that it's not quite like that. To save the forest you have to, to leave the nature to do its job. Great to see chainsaws being used constructively for once. This is part of an FCC initiative with the help of the EU to repair the damage caused by logging tracks that crisscross these mountainsides. What happens is very rapidly, due to soil erosion, they turn into trenches and then ravines. So the idea here is to cut up all the dead wood that's left lying about and to fill them in, to cover them over with earth and then to replant. So in 30 or 40 years time, you won't even know they've ever been here. 
Ensuring the safety of wild Carpathia is not just down to its present day inhabitants. The best way to guarantee its survival is through environmental education. Sadly, something that is currently a low priority on many school agendas. To combat this problem, an international charity is launching a fleet of purpose-built battle buses to tour remote areas of the country and teach children the importance of biodiversity and ecological issues. <laughs> it's encouraging to see so much positive change taking place in areas like these. There is hope and many high profile figures are now lending their support to champion the need for conservation. Not just of the forests, but also the historic villages and pastoral setting that surrounds them. Your Royal Highness, how can we preserve this wonderful landscape? Well, I mean, it is, it is, a, it is a challenge, I think, in, in, in today's world. I mean, part of the real um, effort, I think, is in trying to persuade people just how precious it is. So it's how do you provide protection and sensitive development? Because the key, obviously, you can't stop everything, but is to work, I've always felt anyway, if one can, to work with local people who, nine times out of ten, all around the world, don't want to see their environment destroyed but they want to find ways of ensuring that their lives can be improved and they have better opportunities, but within a living tradition, whether it's the built environment or the management of the landscape. The terrible problem I've always felt is that people so often go through a phase of, oh, well, none of this, you know, it's all old-fashioned and out of date, doesn't matter, irrelevant, you know, it's old things, chuck them all away. But later on, people suddenly realize the value of all this, by which time, if you're not careful, it's too late because you know, you've knocked so many things down or allowed all sorts of insensitive development. And clearly there's huge demand for food and everything else, but it does seem to me that one of the most vital aspects of all this is how you work with local communities, how to help ensure the survival, the future, of the smallholder. This part of the world, you know, it's not, you can't plough it up. And if you did, you'd release vast amounts of carbon, which is completely counterproductive. You know, the meadows are, in European and global terms, utterly unique. I have never seen anything like it. There's nothing left like this. And this is a jewel in Romania's crown. It may be difficult for people to see this now, but I think Romania is a, is a wonderful country. I, they are remarkable people. They're so resilient. And the Romanians have had such a, a horrific experience throughout their lives. And so many people, what do you think of? two world wars and then all the other horrors between the last war and until now. People have been through so much, seen so much misery and destruction. Their lives have been ruined in so many ways. And you know, I think we owe it to them to try and find a way to ensure that the future is, 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 is better for them, but in a way that enhances the, the culture, the traditions and the values. But unless you have you know, the quality maintained, that integrity which attracts people because of the beauty and you know, how to raise the standards of accommodation and everything else on offer, it's going to be very difficult, it seems to me, for so many of these places to survive. You were personally involved in the restoration of the house here in Zalem Patak. Absolutely. I mean, I was very lucky because I found wonderful people who knew what they were doing and it also helped to train local people in all these skills. In fact, they're innate still these remarkable skills that people have. I just want people to understand what you could do to these houses to make them suitable for modern living. But, you know, you can have the best of the ancient and the best of the modern. These are such special things and we need biodiversity and human and cultural diversity. The danger of, I think, massive globalization is that before we know where we are, we've lost our identity and our meaning. And that's a dangerous moment, I think. The rural communities and the forest are inextricably linked. As tourists pay to stay in villages like Zalampatak, so too will they explore the Carpathian hills and mountains, contributing to their continued safety and preservation.
With the right approach, this magnificent wilderness could become the Yellowstone Park of Europe and bring its people a far more sustainable income than the short-term gains obtained by felling vital forest. The tide is beginning to turn and will gain momentum with every visitor that comes here to marvel at this arboreal Eden. Romania is the warden of a vast natural landscape, the likes of which the rest of us have in our greed and ignorance destroyed. Let us hope that this beautiful country and its unique people manage to do better than us, not just for the sake of the bears, the wolves, the lynx, or the thousands of other species that rely on these pristine ecosystems, but so that all our grandchildren can grow up in a future where wild Carpathia still remains one of the world's greatest natural wonders.